I'm going to introduce uh, Dr. Adam, Dr. Shane, and Dr. Adam at, it was Bisson. Mm -hmm. I still once in a while catch myself calling it Bisson, but it's now Catalyst Health Center. Mm -hmm. And they have been work colleagues with us for many years. And I would now, I would say friends. Yeah. We have been friends now for quite some time. Um, there are only a couple, you're not the only one, there's only a couple chiropractors that we refer Everybody we see here, we usually refer them to two chiropractors. Now that's pretty cool considering there's, I don't know how many hundreds of chiropractors yeah. probably in Kansas City. And you mean Shane and Adam, because right. they're both Shane chiropractors, so that's two. the two now. <laughs> so yes, there, I mean, we just, obviously we're really into people we trust and people mm -hmm. we know and people who we constantly get good feedback about how mm -hmm. amazing they are. And that's Dr. Adam and Dr. Shane. So uh, we're honored to have them here. We've done a lot of events together. Yeah. And uh, he's going to talk about, I can't remember the title, but... Healing on Purpose. Healing on Purpose. That's right. It, igniting purpose. some life. How so does that I sound? Will be quiet. Yeah? I, I'm up next at 3 o'clock if you want to stick around on fasting. Um, but for right now, I'll turn it over to Just Dr. Adam. Perfect. That's what I'm doing right now. All right. So, very good. All right. Yeah, speaking of fasting, everybody eat real quick because you're going to start fasting right after this. Is that what it is? No. I, I just, no, not at all. Um... You know, it's kind of like when you go speak and you're talking about how bad soda is and everybody has soda in the room and they feel guilty for it. It's like, wait a second. Um, no, we're, we're actually going to get started here. Speaking of fasting, I thought it was interesting that he was going to speak on fasting after me because I'm actually currently fasting, um, which is perfect. So um, I'm going to probably stay around to, to listen more on that. But um, first of all, Vaughn, thank you uh, so much. It's, it's been a, a tremendous journey working with you and um, in spirit of health and obviously building a friendship and, and relationship that way with you and your family. So coming in today um, was very exciting for us uh, because one of the great things about coming here is, is the understanding that, that those of you that are sitting here are being proactive towards your health. You know, you guys are all looking and seeking for something, right? And at Catalyst Health Center, you know, those are the type of patients that we truly want to, to not just bring in, but to even lift up to a further level. And that's the ultimate purpose of Catalyst. When we look, you know, people want to know, well, what's your mission? What are you trying to do? Um, am I good? Um, is, is truly in our mission is to begin to restore hope and ignite life in people. Because a lot of times when people walk into our door, it's not because they're, they're healthy and they're happy. Why do you think they're walking into our door? They're suffering, right? They're hurting and, and they're not getting the answers that they need. In fact, most of the time, we're the last resort when patients are coming in. I truly wish that, you know, even for Vaughn and for us, that, you know, it was the reverse in the fact that it's the first response to go somewhere that's going to help your body heal the way that God designed it to heal. And then maybe if that doesn't work, which I'll let you know every time, it will work. If you do exactly what God has planned for you and for your body, it will work that, that the alternative wouldn't be this and the alternative wouldn't be chiropractic and the alter alternative wouldn't be all these other things. The alternative would be surgery and drugs. And, and that's truly how I'm trying to transition the mindset of America today. And it starts with talks like this. And, and so that's why I love doing this and partnering with Vaughn. And so, you know, again, Dr. Shin, myself, my first question always that I ask people is what is health? What is health? In fact, if I go back, you already read it quickly, but what is your definition of health? I try to make it interactive, so you, you can't answer. <laughs> Anybody? When, you, when you're healthy, tell me, tell me what that looks like to you. Feel good. You feel good, right? Energy. You have energy. No issues. No issues, right? And these, these strength, these are the most common things. In fact, the most common answer that we typically get is I feel good. But I have to ask you the question, how many people do you know that have had a heart attack, that have had cancer, that have diabetes, that have high cholesterol, that feel good? Almost every single one of those people do. Until when? Until it's too late, right? Until it's too late. And so we have to look, because if we look at what our greatest asset is, which is what? Anybody know? Health. Our health, right? I mean, trust me, we've pulled patients before and said, what is your greatest asset? You know, some people will say, you know, my savings account. Uh, trust me, we've had everything from cars to finances. But the majority of the patients, when they actually begin to come in and say what their greatest asset is, it's their health. Because if you lose your health, what have you lost? You've lost all your finances. You've lost all those things that you truly feel are valuable to you. And so when we look at health, 
Health by Dorland's Medical Dictionary is stated as 100% function physically, mentally, socially, and spiritually, not just the absence of disease, right? So it's not just how we feel, it's how we heal, which is why on here I capitalized the H-E-A-L, because it's how we heal is that truly defines how healthy we truly are. So I show some research because before we can get to a point where we need to be, especially with our health, we have to know where we've been, right? And, and how to get to that next point. So this is um, a study that was done 2000 and, was it 2010? And it's among 17 industrialized nations. Now these 17 industrialized nations, obviously they have money, they have finances. Where did the US rank in these 17 nations when it came to overall health, life, longevity? Where do you think? I have, I have it up here for you too. <laughs> 17th, 17th when it comes to being overweight, body mass index, diabetes, infant mortality, which is why I love the previous speaker that was in here. It's still the safest, okay, to actually have your midwife being able to help you have a baby in a natural way, right? But if we're the best when it comes to our healthcare system today, do you think these and this would be happening? No, it wouldn't. Now, the truth is, is that we do have the best technology, I, I definitely know we have the best doctors. I'm one of them, so I have to say that, right? No, we have the best doctors in the world, but if it was just the technology and if it was just the doctors, shouldn't we be the healthiest? And yet we're the sickest. And in fact, this research study was actually called, what? The US Health Disadvantage. How crazy is that? So we live in a system that when it comes to our overall health, we're actually at a disadvantage compared to, to the other 16 industrialized nations, and in fact, if you truly look at the research, a lot of third world countries have better health than we do. I mean, trust me, it's not about poverty, it's not about the commercials that we see, trust me, you'll see plenty of them where people aren't doing well. But when it comes to overall health, we are, we are dead last. So we need to transition that mindset of what we're doing. So when we look at disease, and a disease timeline from the start of a disease, okay? So before we know we have cancer, do you think that's when the disease is starting? So you think the cancer starts the day you find out you have cancer? No, let me reword that. So the start of cancer is right here, right? Okay, this is the end stage disease, which is also known as what? Death, right? Where does the symptom show up? Here? Here? Right there. How incredible is that? You know, my goal through this is to help transition your mind, okay? healing on purpose, okay? Igniting life, helping you understand that, that life is not just us having our eyes open and breathing and moving, okay? Life is more than that. Life is vitality. It's not a survival mode. It, it's, it's a mode that we can actually thrive and move forward. And if we constantly wait till we're here, is it easier to get to here or easier to get to here? <laughs> yeah, we laugh, but right here, right? And so what do we have to do to begin to transition that? So if your body is so amazing, why is it breaking down, right? Isn't that the question? Why do I ache with this? Why do I hurt with this? Why did this person who I thought ate all the right foods and exercise develop cancer, right? We're going to get to that here in a second. In fact, my stepfather is one of those people. He exercised every single day. He rode a bike. He did rag bri. Has anybody heard of Rag Bri? It's an it's a Iowa bicycling, goes all the way across the state of Iowa. Okay? So this guy's fit. He's like 6'2, lean, healthy, organic food, all of these things. He went in for a yearly checkup and found out that he had stage 4 prostate cancer. He felt fine, but was he healthy? Did the cancer show up clear over here? No, it showed up clear back here, and it was stage 4. You know, there's a little girl in our church right now. She's literally three years old. It's the age of my daughter. I'm going to try not to cry on this. We got a phone call. Yeah. Okay. A few weeks back, I had just talked to the mom earlier that day about her son and some things that were going on. And I said, call me if you ever need anything. That night, 1130, I hear sirens in the back of the phone. She's calling me and they're rushing her daughter to the hospital because she literally dropped over, stopped breathing, and they didn't know what was going on. Lymphoblastic lymphoma in her lungs. She's alive and she's at home today. And I'll tell you, 99% of that is the power of prayer and the healing that comes from it, okay? They rushed her to Children's Mercy. They saved her life. She is alive today. But did that cancer start 
when she got to the hospital the moment she passed out? No, it was starting before. So what are the things that we're doing and what's causing these issues is this right here. You guys ever heard of this word? You guys ever deal with this word? <laughs> ever? You do realize that stress on a physical, chemical, and emotional basis, these are the different ways that it can affect you. Okay, I call it the three T's. Okay, toxins, trauma, and thoughts. Okay, is that stress can either help you or it can hinder you. You know stress can actually be good for you, right? Do you know what one of the most stressful and fearful things on earth is actually to do? Do you guys know what it is? Do you think people fear death? Yeah, yeah, people fear death, right? Pretty high up on that board. What about public speaking? <laughs> right, yeah, it's actually ranked higher than death. Crazy as that. Yeah, trust me, my heart was beating pretty hard every time I come up here. It's all right, because I know I have a purpose and a mission. And, and my ultimate goal is that even if it's one word, it can spark a change. It can ignite life in you to begin to move forward, okay? So we have to look at this. You know, stressful situations, we can look at them. The truth is the research that is shown on stress is that you can deal with stress on a daily basis and it can increase your risk for things like heart disease and cancer and diabetes, pain, trust me, the list goes on and on, okay? But what they actually found through research is that when it comes to stress, it's not about the actual stressful situation, it's your perception of the stress that truly determines where your health is actually gonna go. My goal is to create a pivot point for you. Is if we're here, how do we get over here if we're on this road right here, right? So, three pillars of health. I talk about three pillars of health. When I talked about what the definition of health is, 100% function physically, mentally, socially, and spiritually, not the absence of disease. And trust me, these can have many subcategories, but my three pillars of health are mind, body, and spirit. And then I go directly into Romans 12.2. Because it's the renewal of what? It's our mind. There is nothing more powerful than a changed mind. Nothing more powerful. Okay? Now, my question to you right now, when we talk about that, is what is your vision? What is your vision for your life right now? Because the truth is, if you don't have your health, what true health is, if you don't have that, do you think that vision is ever going to come to fruition? That's a reality check. I'm trying to, trust me, I, I, I can push buttons sometimes, but I'm okay with that. Because the truth, what is the saying? The truth will? What? It'll set you free, right? And it truly does. But sometimes we don't know what the truth is, for it's a lack of knowledge that leads us where? And the Bible verse stops, right? <laughs> it literally can lead to death. Okay? And peril. Yeah. Right? So, so we have to have an understanding. Our goal at Catalyst is education. Teach people. People don't have to come to us. But when I sit and stand, I never sit. If I stand in front of people, if I can give you the knowledge and you can take that, now you are informed. You are more powerful than when you walked in this door. And you can make the decision on what you want to do. So I love this. Carolyn uh, Leaf, Dr. Carolyn Leaf, if you use what God has given you, you will grow into who he created you to be. Your God self. I remember sitting down with my pastor one time and he said, I'm so excited to see the full expression of God working through you. I'm like, wow, that's so cool. Because when you do that, do you think that you live in fear on a regular basis? No, you just continue to move forward. So here's my question. What do you see here? Anybody else scoot up the side? I'm not going to be on the camera for a moment. What do you see? Well, now what do you see? Oh. You see a cow, right? I hope nobody thought it was a sheep or something like that. You still got it wrong after I outlined it. It's, it's a cow, right? So sometimes we even have our own blinders on that we can't even see. And again, it's perception a lot of times of, you know, this is what I thought health was. Oh, wait, no, this is actually what the definition of health is. So sometimes we just have to have that little, little piece of change that opens up our eyes to move and take that pivot point in that new direction. So, I always talk about the mind because there's nothing more powerful than what? A changed mind. So, reconditioning your mind. Do you think it's an easy task? No, it's not an easy task. I feel like I have to recondition my mind about every 10 minutes uh, because of where it goes all the time. 
is this going to work out? Is that going to work out? You know, I own a business. Is, am I going to be able to provide for this? I've got my family. I've, I've had a wife that's had chronic illness. I, I have four kids from six all the way down to six months. Two of them were surprises. Yay! You know, uh, they're the biggest blessing. But if I look at it not as a stress, but as a blessing, how does that change our mind? How does that change my body from the inside out? Okay, so recondition your mind. Don't let the mistakes of your past rob you of your talents and God's future for you. Okay? I think that's vitally important. Okay? Ask yourself these questions. Do I take care of myself? Am I letting myself get overweight, out of shape? Am I conscious of my health? Do I make a deliberate effort to exercise? Okay? What do I want? That's a pretty important question, right? Have you asked yourself what you truly want? What do you want to do? What do you want to be? I love having kids in here because I mean, it's just their, their minds are so open. It's like, what do you want to be? I want to be a fireman. I want to be an astronaut. I want to be a doctor. I want to be a garbage man. I, who, what if we could continually think like a child, right? That our mind could truly open up and, and be in that place. It's powerful stuff. More important, what does God want for me? That's an even bigger question that we have to begin to ask ourselves. We cannot help getting older, but we don't have to get old. I love this. George Burns says this. The truth is, we all are aging. That's one thing that never goes away, is time, right? Time is the same for me as it is for you, isn't it? And, and there, somebody once said it's, you know, no matter what you're wanting to get out of life, no matter what direction, no matter what purpose, no matter what passion, you know, it depends on what you do with your time that's going to get you there. I like to change that a little bit and I say, it's actually more about what you do with your mind that gets you there. Because what's here is going to dictate what we're going to do moving forward. Because how many of you right now in this room are at your optimum health? That you're in the place where you could say, I exercise the way that I want to exercise, I, I eat the way that I want to eat, I feel the best I've ever felt in my life, and I'm just, I'm at the top of my game right now. How many people in here? Wow. <laughs> Nobody. Why? Why? Because you can have that. You know that. You can have it. And when we truly begin to think about this, where you are right now is what you've thought about yourself up until this point. And that's the truth. And so if you're not where you want to be, it's because of the way that you were thinking about every single day, every single moment, where you want to be. So if you want to change where you're at, what do we have to do? We have to change our thinking. Where do I want to be? How do I, that's why I say like every 10 minutes, sometimes it's five minutes, sometimes it's three. You know, I've got to change the way that I think about where I want to end up. Because if I'm thinking, man, I'm so tired, what am I going to be? In fact, our thoughts are more powerful than our actions. Because what? It first starts here, right? Our thoughts create our actions. Our thoughts create our words. You know, when you say, oh, I, I just slipped up. I didn't mean to say that. What were you thinking? <laughs> right? It's there. And so if we want to transition and change when it comes to our health and our living and ignite change in our life, we have to start within that mind. We have to ignite a spark. You know what, you know what a catalyst is? A catalyst is something that, that, you're, that put, is put into an equation to ignite a change a faster change than you would get without it. You know why we named ourselves Catalyst? It's to help people to ignite that change at a faster rate than they would without us. And, and that's why I talk about the mind so much. Discovering your purpose is like setting a compass. It gives you direction, right? Anybody write down your purpose, write down your goals, write these things down, okay? Those are important, but what do you do with that on a daily basis? That's even more important. Do you look at them constantly or, or do you just set them to the side and three months from now I'm going to take a look? How many of you have gone through the New Year's resolution and dropped it three weeks later? Yeah, right? No, everybody, I've done it. Everybody's done it. You know, because if our goals, we've got to set these little goals. Uh, Tony Robbins, I, I love listening to him in the morning. Les Brown is somebody else that I love to listen to because I'm trying to feed my mind constantly with this information on, on life and changes in life. Tony Robbins is talking about taking little things every single day, okay, little things that are going to spark life in you to get you closer to what your purpose and what your mission is. Like, I haven't done a talk in a few weeks, 
and doing this is like getting me excited. It, it refills me constantly. So even just practicing, practicing is fun for me. So the two most important days in a person's life is when you were born and the day you find out why. Do y'all know why you're here? You know, just a few weeks ago, I, I drove my wife back from one of her medical treatments and our church was having their weekend retreat. I kept hearing God say, you've got to go to this retreat. You just got to go there. There's going to be healing. There's going to be things that are happening there. You got to go. And I'm like, but God, it's, it's a four hour drive there. And then it's two hours back in the exact same direction that I went. And I've got my kid and I've got, so I drove him home. I found a sitter literally that day. I went back and I'm driving back. And as I'm doing that, I'm, I'm just listening to worship music. I'm praying, God, just why, why are you wanting me to do this? And I, and I hear from him saying, you're supposed to tell the story of health. Your mission is to tell people what true health is. What is health? And it's not just a chiropractic adjustment. It's not just a supplement. You know, it's not these things. It's, it's the renewing of our mind. Because from there, all things will flow from above, down, inside, and out. That's true health. And so when we look at this, what do you believe about the end determines how you behave in the middle. Does that not make sense? I mean, how many of us have had life situations and because of that situation, we've avoided so many others because we know that it's going to end up exactly the same. Is it? Right? It's our past that keeps us in a, a state of fear to prevent us from getting to that point where we know God really wants to take us. I'm sounding like a pastor now. Sorry. <laughs> I, I get excited. So... What if instead of our circumstances controlling our thought life, our thought life controlled our circumstances? And this is not something that's just for me. Trust me, I say this again and again. I have to work on this every single day. But what if that were the case? You realize that you have that power within you to be able to do that. If you had your life to live over again, would you have done more? Would you have done more? If you were to go back, would you say, you know, I could have done this, I could have done this. We all have that going on, right? But you could be sitting here and you're not doing something because of fear of it not working or not moving forward. And Les Brown gives this great analogy. He's speaking and he says, this gentleman or this lady, they're laying on their deathbed and, and as they are actually passing on, there's these basically these spirits that are all around them and it's the spirit of the book that that person should have uh, written. It's the spirit of that trip that person should have taken to do missions. It's, it's these spirits that basically are saying, why didn't you use me? Why didn't I move forward with that? And to me, that was a great analogy because the truth is, we look back in our lives, the truth is we're all still here, right? So we can look back at those things that we haven't done and we can actually still do them. It's never too late. And that's what I think is so powerful. And the one thing that typically keeps us from that is what's this word right here? Fear. Fear can either be a blocker or it can be a building block, okay? It can be a blocker or it can be a building block. Which is it for you? You know, I, a patient just the other day, I know I'm, I go off on tangents. I, had, I, when I always joke before I start talking and I'll be like, yeah, I'm gonna talk for three hours. Everybody looks at me like, what? I really could talk for three hours. I get excited. But, but I had a patient come in and, and she's like, I'm dealing with some severe, severe anxiety. You know, what did you do with your wife when she was dealing with anxiety and depression. I was like, whew, okay, well that's kind of loaded. Um, everybody's situation is different, you know. I said number one is prayer, but the other thing was to realize that every new situation that we were dealing with, a moment of depression, a next seizure, or, or the inability to walk, whatever it was, is to understand is as she moved forward, we were still not in the same place we were two or three days ago. Because we were in a new place. When my wife miraculously I mean, y'all heard of Kairos moments? These moments that just, they, they are beyond time that God is placing you in. We had a, I still think we're in a Kairos moment. Her healing went from seizures daily, not walking, to literally standing up and she ran. Okay? Yeah. It, it's, it's powerful that these things happen. And, and we always heard through this whole thing, oh, we want the old gen back. We want the old gen back or you know, the old Adam. or The, the truth is, every single day we are changing because we are renewing our minds. So it's the new gen, it's the new Adam, it's the new you that is coming forward. Truly, when you walk out of this room, it's a new you because hopefully you're learning something new that you can use and utilize in your life. That's the power of our mind. So don't let fear be a blocker for you, okay? Life is God's gift to us. How we live it is our gift back to Him. 
I'll sit every time I talk somewhere, that is what I say. So, hard and impossible are two separate things. During times of adversity, you will not perform an act equal to your challenge, you will perform an act equal to your training. You know, we were told to start laughing when bad things happened. And you know what it sounded like at first? <laughs> it's fake, right? It's a fake laugh. It's just because we hadn't practiced enough. You know? So we just got to practice on these things. Whatever it is, whatever your passion is, your purpose is, go for it. Keep training. You cannot build anything that won't bring a battle. It's the truth. Meaning that I'm a practitioner. I help bring healing. I know God has given me a gift for healing. I bring healing to people. And what is God trying, or the enemy trying to take away from me and my family on a daily basis? Our health. Yeah, he attacks you in your strengths. But just realize that he has no endurance. The enemy has no endurance. There is no endurance that God cannot out-endure. And that's the truth. Yeah. Okay? So, cynicism is a choice. Hope is a better one. Just little quotes here. Failure is simple. Success is not so simple. True success is significance. Keep moving forward. I say that all the time. That's, I don't know if that's my tagline. I don't know where I heard it. I just always say it. Keep moving forward. Keep moving forward because you end up exactly where you need to be and where God wants you. So here we go. I mean, I'm not even halfway through my slides. I'm going to have to move. I'm, I'm, are we good? Okay, good. Usually when people, when people walk in, Tiffany's like, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Cultivating healthy habits or healing habits. I used to have healthy habits on here, but what is health? It's healing from the inside out. So it goes from our beliefs to our action to an outcome. We talk about education. When we educate, when we teach, when we, when we fill our minds, then we take the proper actions to then get the proper income. Outcome. I don't know why I said income. It comes in, but that's good. Obviously, what goes in does come out, does it not? Right? Yeah. Food and wisdom and knowledge, hopefully. So, I, I love this. Um, this is also this has come from Matthew. There's a little bit of a gap here, but make a, a tree good, and its fruit will bear uh, for you good fruit. If you make a tree bad, it will bear bad fruit. If a tree is recognized, but a tree is recognized by its fruit, right? So we we look at this and the fact of the things that we're doing, the things that we're getting from what we're doing, are coming from the things that we're actually doing, right? So what we get is what we're giving. You know, one of the biggest things is just give. give. That's why I love speaking. Because to me, this is like, this is a way for me to give. And the little bits and pieces that I've learned through the years. So, movement and fuel. Motion is life. Now we're getting into a little bit more. I've gone through the mind. Now I'm going to go into body. The things that come in. The things that go out. Again, above, side, above down, inside out. I start talking really fast when I get excited. So I'm going to slow down a little bit. But movement and fuel. Motion is life. What happens to a pond when it has no outlet? Stagnant, right? What happens to your body if your blood stops flowing? Stagnant, you die, right? What about your nervous system if it stops moving? It, you also die, right? What controls your heart? So even above the blood flow, what controls that? Our nervous system, right? So when things aren't moving, even food and fuel, these things that have to be moving through you, if you begin to look at food in a different way of, most people think of food as pleasure, right? They think of food as pleasure. We gather, we, we associate foods with situations, right? And so we eat for that pleasure. But we need to begin to transition our mindset into eating for fuel, okay? So this is the endless cycle of decreased well-being, which is kind of the, uh, the American way right here. So stress, tension, muscle tightness, decreased circulation, metabolic waste and accumulation, toxicity, then to pain, and then to stress again because now I have pain and it just keeps going, right? How do we break those bonds? So the power of the human body, the power of the human body, how did God create us? Over, over 100 trillion cells that are constantly trying to communicate and connect and send a signal to, to say, I'm on this stage of early disease or this stage of end, end disease or where am I? The truth is, all of this healing, all of this function begins from the inside out, right? And so what controls all function of your body? It's our nervous system, right? Now, is it our brain or our spinal cord that actually controls our nervous system? Our brain controls most of what happens within our body, right? Well, here I'm going to... I'm going to switch some things on you. Some new research. Some really awesome information, okay? So we're going to hear something new. 
But here's where I go with this. You can go a month without food, days without water, minutes without air, but can you go a moment without your nervous system sending a signal to allow your body to do something? No, if you have a cut, it's your nervous system that's sending a signal to get those platelets there to clot that up and to, to hold it so you don't bleed out. A bone, if you break it, what does it do? It'll heal. If it's not sticking clear out, right? You know, if it's still in there, it'll heal. It may need to be set, but it will heal. Do you have to think about that healing process? No. How awesome is that? I wouldn't want to have to think about that for like, you know, 12 to 16 weeks or however long it takes. We wouldn't want to think about that, but would you rather have a brain problem or a back problem? It's okay, you can say back problem, right? Yeah, yeah me, right? I can, we can take care of that. But we all say what? We all say a back problem. Well, here is where the fun begins and the change and the transition. Our spine is actually a neurospinal organ. Okay, this is what the new research is showing. It's not just a set of hard bones with soft tissue that surrounds it and a spinal cord that sits inside of it. Your spinal cord, by the way, is an extension of your brain. Okay, and where does it set? In your back. So if an extension of your brain is in your back, how important is your back? Pretty important. Now this neurospinal organ, what the research is showing is all efferent activity, okay? All from the brain going down to recognize and control body begins at the cerebral cortex, so we're within the brain. Firing of that cortex is regulated by the thalamus. I'm getting into some science here, so just bear with me. All sensory afferent, everything coming back, okay, from the body back up, info is integrated in the thalamus right here. So what is the thalamus? Firing of this, of this is regulated by this, right? So for this to get signals out to the body, it is regulated by the thalamus, okay? All information coming out and back up has to go where? To the thalamus. So the in and out all have to go through this right here, right? Okay, so the only constant firing that is always going on are the mechanoreception responses to gravity. Meaning that when we stand up, okay? We are constantly, yeah, there you go, she's standing. All those constant responses are going to the thalamus, which have to go to the cerebral cortex to tell the cerebral cortex then what to send out to our body. So these signals going up are actually dictating what's going back out. Pretty cool, right? But these mechanoreceptors are basically in every joint, but they're most highly populated right up here. How many of you guys ever deal with an issue like right here, right? How many of you guys have any restricted range of motion? You can't turn the way that you should. Look up, look down, side to side. A lot of us in here, right? But we just think, oh, I'm just, I have a stiff neck. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little switcheroo on you, what that stiff neck can actually be doing to you because those mechanoreceptors, when we talk about gravity, they actually don't shut off even when you lay down. It's constantly firing in, okay? And the only ones are sitting right up here, they're throughout your whole spine. So that means that the moment those mechanoreceptors are not sending a positive signal to your brain of motion and movement and freedom, is that sending a stress signal or a non-stress signal to your brain? A stress signal. So the moment you begin to lose range of motion, your neck, your spine, even in a joint, it's a stress signal constantly going to your brain. And is that going to allow positive input from your brain to your body or negative? Negative. So the motion of our spine dictates what our brain is actually telling our body. Crazy awesome. So, there's something that just slid up there. Obviously not important. If I can get to the next slide. So, we talk about subluxation. It's this long word that chiropractors use. Now, we are a, a medically integrated office. We have a nurse practitioner. We have chiropractic. We have rehab therapy. Um, we have a lot that goes on in here because we don't want people to have to go to multiple clinics. That they're, The physicians and the doctors all know what's going on with somebody when they come in that we can actually communicate. We take it to our team to make sure that you're getting better. But we look for this thing called subluxation. That subluxation is determined by the alignment of your spine that we see through x-rays and the movement of your spine in your joints. Because if there is restriction, is that sending abnormal signals to our brain? Yeah, this is so much more than just a pinched nerve or compression on a nerve. Because that restriction, what the American Journal of Neurology states, not chiropractic journal at all, Neurology Journal states that 37% of 20-year-olds have asymptomatic disc degeneration within their spine. Meaning, they don't feel anything, but 37% of these 20-year-olds have degeneration. How many of us think degeneration is an old person disease? Osteoarthritis, we do, right? 
But what this proves is that restriction in movement increases the rate and the risk for degeneration. It can be in your knees, it can be in your spine. So the moment something is not moving the way that it should, degeneration sets in within one to four weeks. So as we move on, so along with 96% of 80 year olds, that's a pretty high number, right? So there's the older population. Disc bulges prevalence increased from 30% of those 20 year olds of age to 84% of those of 80 years of age. Disc protrusions is 29% of the 20 year olds and younger and 43% of 80 year olds. Do you ever think of people younger than 20 years old having disc degeneration and, and disc bulges and protrusions? We hear about that in the older generation. But research is now showing that that lack of motion is increasing the risk because a disc is only going to bulge when that alignment and that movement is not happening properly. So we are specialists at spinal movement and alignment to make sure that we can actually begin to reverse those processes and begin to get that body to heal. And here's obviously Christopher Reeves. Some of you may know who he is, some of you may not. Um, but Here's the truth, spinal cord injuries eventually affect virtually every organ of the body and lead to what is known as accelerated aging. Because if we're made up of 100 trillion cells or more, what controls the regeneration of healthy cells? Those signals from here, right? Yeah, and if there's misalignment, if there's restriction and those signals aren't proper signals to our brain, what begins to diminish? Organ function, proper healing. What controls your immune system, anybody know? system. Your nervous system controls your immune system as well. What do you need to have really, really strong if you never, ever want to have cancer? Strong immune system. But more important than a strong immune system, what do you need to have? Strong nervous system. So the best science available today shows that the spine is essential to be literally as the motor of the brain. So your spine is the motor. It's like the engine that drives the function of your brain. The brain requires the feedback from the spine through proper alignment and movement in order to deliver the right information to all muscles, organs, and tissues. Here's a little chart. It's very simple. You can see this is the spine, spinal cord, seventh layer, and the connections that it has from the cere uh, cerebellum to the thalamus to the vestibular nucleus, areas that affect the heart, lungs, GI tract, the liver. I mean, it's pretty powerful. Two hours? Okay, thank you. <laughs> Chiropractic, here's the truth. Chiropractic was never about back or neck pain. It never was. Never has been. But what do we associate it with? Neck or back pain, right? Increasing human potential by removing interference within our body. That's the purpose of chiropractic. Okay? That, that's my passion. And we're just opening up the doors to, to even further places when we are able to actually integrate. Because here's, here's the truth. Again, I'm going off a tangent. I'm, I'm going to miss this. I've got two minutes. But here's what's crazy statistically. About 2-5% to 5 of the population sees chiropractors. That's it. Right? Okay, so where does the other 95-98% to 98 of people go? Yeah. For what? Yeah, is that going to get them healthy? No. Right? In fact, which is going to take you closer to health? More medications and more surgeries? Or cleansing and healing and getting your nervous system functioning and putting the right fuel within your body? Yeah? I mean, can't people get this? No. no, they don't want to. That's why I typically challenge people and I say, open up your mind to see what the science, to see what the research is actually showing. And if you want some, we've got some papers back there. But, you know, chiropractic was never designed for that. Here's just some function, obviously, of the spine, some things that it helps with. Spine is the motor to the brain. I'm going to go through some slides here real quick. I just, this is some examples of patients that have come through. But proven benefits of movement. This is spinal motor patterns of movement within your spine prevents up to 47% of cognitive impairment, prevents up to 62% of Alzheimer's and 52% of dementia. Okay? Decreases all cause of mortality by 50% in 61 to 81 year olds. This is just spinal movement, getting out and walking. That's why I love chiropractic so much because what are we eliciting every time we put our hands on a patient in their spine? Movement of the spine to re-trigger that response to the brain. I talk about nutrition a little bit, but I'll let Vaughn go into that. We, I, we are talking more within our clinic um, and instead of using, there's two sources of fuel within our body. Okay, do you know what those sources are? Anybody? I'm gonna flip through this really quick. Nobody knows what sources of fuel are? Vaughn, do you know what sources of fuel? Sugar, glucose, right? And fat, those are the two fuel sources. 
Can one be on and the other be on at the same time? No. It's one or the other. So which are you utilizing? Yeah, it's, it's ketosis. So carbs equal glucose. Sugar has a really nice chart here called inflammation. We know inflammation is very, very good for us. <laughs> or not. Only when we're trying to heal from a cut, something like that. But it leads to many, many issues where fats actually turn into ketones and can be utilized in your body for energy. And then it has a lot of positive benefits right over here. Everything from better cognitive function. It starves cancer cells, okay? Increases energy. So here we go. Both of these women are 74 years old. The choice is yours. The truth is, in transitioning our mind and how we think, where do we want to be? Where does God want us to be? How can we move this? How can we ignite the life within us that then begins a spark to those people around us as well? Our family, our friends. That's why I get up here and I speak. Is because it's not just about the people in this room, it's about those that you love. That you probably are sitting here thinking, I wish they were sitting here right now and heard this information. It's okay. Vaughn said it's going to be on YouTube? Yeah, on YouTube. Okay. So, with that being said, I just want to say thank you for allowing me to come up, to speak, to share my heart, to share my passion. Um, this was a lot of fun for me. I know I didn't get through all my slides and I knew that I wouldn't. That always happens. I've got like five more after this. But we're going to stop here because I just want you to leave with that. So thank you so much, Vaughn. Thank you again. Thank you I appreciate you all. Thank you. Yep.